here today at the Barla Lake Railway. I'm having a bit of fun, and I've been joined by Mr. Chris Eden Green. So yes, I was at the Barla Lake Railway with Chris Eden Green. And originally this video was going to be just me spending a day filming trains while Chris worked on a special episode on the Huntsville engines. Now, and we decided to change it into more of a vlog sort of style of post. So that's why there will be more footage of the trains than me talking on camera. Plus the wind really didn't help that day. Now, Barla Lake is a lovely little railway I've never been before, and it runs along the side of Barla Lake, and thankfully there is a road that runs literally parallel to the track, if not, the height difference doesn't always help. But when you get to certain points, you get these lovely long shots down the track, and they are ever so long. I think this video you're seeing now is almost like five minutes long of the changes to Pokemon. And that's the shortest distance. As you can hear, the wind is quite loud today. The weather wasn't the, the best that we had. Um, So as I was saying, you get these lovely long shots. I think this was like 10 minutes here from the corner you can see at the back to the engine getting close enough to hear it and see it. Uh, as you can tell by the clouds in the sky, the weather wasn't the best. I think the phrase of the weekend became uh, perfect timing as we get back to the car just in time for the rain to start. And by the time we got to our next filming point, the rain would stop. Uh, so yeah, perfect timing on all parts that weekend. So the location of the line, like right, I said, next to the railway, you get some awesome shots like this. This, this one's fun. We're actually out on a pier uh, on, in the lake at this point, technically, down uh, below the level of the track. And we get some really good shots. Um, Chris uh, decided to do something a bit odd, which you'll see in a second. Um, which was interesting. I, th I sort of said to him, Oh, there's a pier. Let me see how the shot is. Oh, you've got a really good shot between the trees. It might be good. And you'll have the water and everything. And he decided to adjust the positioning of his camera just slightly more. Um, and it ended up in the water. Well, the camera didn't end up in the water, but his nice expensive tripod did. Um, so hopefully, when this episode comes out on the DVD... It'll be really nice shot. I must say, I'm, I'm quite liking the shot here now. Ladies and gentlemen, the train if I have to suggest to put your tripod in the water, I really don't recommend it. Oh, come on, it wasn't all that bad. Sorry, Chris. <laughs> Yeah, his tripod legs filled up with water because he extended them to the maximum and put it as low as he could. I like, I like this shot.
So yeah, like I said, a lot of the day was just uh, moving between the stations, uh, between two of the stations, because he wanted to film mostly the good stuff. Um, I like this shot again. This is a good shot. So yeah, as you can see, I'm just running around. Chris's final preparation is literally just as the train's about to leave. And it's so close. Yeah, so ever so close with how and it only gets the shot just in time. Now the stand at the uh, water tower at the bottom of the line. What I find interesting is that the rail is built on top of an old standard gauge branch line. Uh, here we go, another one of the very long shots. So this is coming over a small hill. So where that telegraph pole is right at the back, you could just see it. We were there earlier at the crossing. But again, this is like 10 minutes. And I stopped filming several times and it hadn't gotten any closer. So yeah, that's the main sheds and museum on the left there. And the sidings. We found something interesting in those sheds. Uh, if you saw on Bashmash a few weeks back, a mini inside the shed, that, that was us. I spotted that. Great wrestling plaques and stuff are still there. Like I said, great. Uh, this is up on the road, and you can get some great background shots and scenery shots. Yeah, I haven't edited out sounds or anything like this, like Chris would, so you can hear my brand new tripod, which needs some WD 40. Just creaking and grinding as I'm trying to move it ever so slowly, it doesn't like it. Ah, this is one of my favourite shots. Yeah, I put those a small screen and I put my camera inside it. Uh, we chased the engine and actually overtook it at one point. We were only doing about 20 mile an hour, so and literally just arrived as the engine pulled into the platform and just outside the platform was the passing loop um, a 
again, I could just sense the rain was coming at this point and we just missed it. Yeah, this was an odd moment. The passenger train stopped in the loop next to the goods and the goods ran round behind it and stopped and we thought they were actually going to attach the goods and, and the passenger together. There was a bit of a delay in... Um, but they didn't, which was interesting. I like speculating on what's going to happen on the railways. I always find that fun. Especially when there's a delay in the timetable. And the phantom wind still destroying my mic. Of course, I'm filming on a £120 Sony camera. Chris has got something that's like thousands and thousands of pounds you'd see on TV or something. So. And there goes my focus for a second. I can't quite decide which, because I, I now volunteer at a railway which has a couple of these engines, uh, both cabbed and cabless, and I can't decide which one I prefer more, cabbed or cabless. So leave in the comments what you think about the Hunslet Quarry engines. Do you think with cab looks better than without a cab? Yeah, the final goods train leaving for the day. Again, I, we're just running around trying to get into position quickly as we can for these shots. Um, and I think we did well. I haven't seen Chris's footage, so I can't say for him, but I'm, I'm quite impressed with what I've got. Say so this is the first time I'd use this tri uh, tripod, hence the creaky, shaky, uh, juttery movement of it. I mean, it seems to be loosened enough at, by, by the end of the day. Just getting it first moving. That there's Chris and my umbrella at this point because we didn't quite miss the rain. Um, at least we have a nice warm car we can jump into. I feel sorry for the train crews, especially the open cab one. So that's the weather behind us and we were decided, you know what, we're going to head home because the worst weather's coming in and then Chris decided he's going to chance it. <laughs> Why not? Oh yeah. It's right here and we've got time. Yeah, I can't blame you. You actually do get quite a nice view of the engine approach, so. And it's right next to this gorgeous... Well, yes. What do, what do we want, as Chris just said as I finished the filming. I wonder what's made that white streak across the, across the water. because it's not going away. No. That's so rather, rather odd, isn't it? Boat. Hurry, Chris. This is the last shot of the day. Again, Chris trying to get his angle and everything right, down to the last second. And that was pretty much our day at Barla Lake. It was rather fun following Chris round and seeing the behind of scenes of his, when he's filming. I have done it once before at the Great we uh, Central Railway, but this one was a bit more intense. Thank you for watching and goodbye. 
And now for something completely different.